Uh, welcome. Now we're doing Bernoulli trials, and we'd like to cover two things. We'll, we'll, we'll cover Bernoulli trials, and we also would like to cover the related approximation, De Moyer Laplace and Poisson approximation. So we're ready. What are Bernoulli trials? What, when do we call an experiment to be Bernoulli? Experiments that end up with one of two possible outcomes, hit or miss, or for example, win or lose, zero or one. Those are called Bernoulli experiments, either or. So they are basic experiments with two possible outcomes, A or A complement. Either you succeed or you fail. Now we're referring to the probability of the event A, which is the event of main interest, let's say success rather than fail. We call it P. And then the probability of fail or A complement will be 1 minus P. You can also flip. So we have a main possible event with probability P, and its complement will have a, a probability of 1 minus P. In Bernoulli experiment, we usually repeat the experiment in times. In Bernoulli uh, trials, the experiment itself have two possible outcomes. In trials, we repeat the experiment multiple times. Now, we use capital N to refer to the number of experiments that we, we conduct, a number of experiments. And then we are interested in how many successes, if you are shooting penalties, how many out of the five are success or goals? So basically, we are after counting how many events were successful or hit or when? Assuming, of course, in our assumption that all events or repetitions are independent from each other. This independence will allow us to multiply the probabilities. So the general formula for the probability of A to occur K times, K is the number of, the number of required success, we're showing it in blue. It will be p raised to the power k. We need k cases multiplied by each other, p times p times p up to the power k. All the remaining must be failures, so their probability will be 1 minus p. And this is why the remaining, the remaining cases will be raised to the power n minus k. So in total we have n. p of them is going to be success, k of them will be success, n minus k will be failure. But remember, the success could be in the beginning or at the end. So we have different combinations. So we're going to multiply this by n choose k. Like if you shoot five penalties, and then I ask you, what is the probability that you have uh, one only scored? So we'd say it's going to be either p, okay? And then the remaining is wrong, okay? Or it could be the second one, or the third. So this will take care of where does this success occurs. Again, if you have two, there are different combinations. And remember, we're multiplying because we are assuming all elements, all events to be elementary events to be independent. So you need to remember this. It's logical. It's p raised to the power number of success times one minus p raised to the power n minus k. The remaining, and of course, this is the usually forgotten term. Okay, most of the students forget this term when they solve because um, the success could occur at different uh, scenarios. Now, if we take an example, uh, let's say that the army is firing a torpedo on a carrier. Okay, and the probability of hitting this carrier when we fire the torpedo, it's 0.4. And this, this is going to sink if two or more hits, if, if two torpedoes hits, one is not enough, two or more would be enough. In total, we are firing three. So if you try, this is either hit or miss, this is Bernoulli experiment or Bernoulli trial, and we have capital N equal to three because we have N, we're firing three times, and uh, probability of hit, this is small p, 0.4, so what's k? k could be 2 or 3, because here in the question it says 2 or more. 
to start with let's find the probability of having two heads okay so this is the basic fundamental uh, probability of the of the of the elementary event point four capital n is three torpedoes as given in the questions in the question and they say this will give you only probability of exactly two so three choose two point four is for two one minus point four is for one two heads one miss that will give you 0.288 we also need to find the probability of hitting three exactly with we, we we fire three and all of them is hit if you want to try you can pause the video and make sure that you get the number correct because we're going to show the number in the next slide if we continue with the example we can see that probability of three hits is three choose three because there's only one possible one scenario and you get 0 0.64 0 0.064 so the total probability will be the sum of the two because we can have two or three and that will give you 0 0.352 now just for the fun of it if you want you can find the probability of zero hits and one hit and the sum of all numbers must be one because we either have zero one two or three that will be a good practice to try and the sum should be one now another example or to continue with the example it says given we are firing three for three seconds this is like an automatic automatic firing and the rate of firing is 2400 per minute find the probability of exactly 50 hits okay so need this is like a Bernoulli experiment clearly but we need to find what's capital n how many are we firing exactly okay from these two numbers we can find capital n and this is small k probability of hit will remain the same for this for this example so now if you allow me we continue probability of exactly k this is the original formula now where the probability is stay the same for the same example point four capital n we have three seconds times 2400 bullets per minute divide by 60 seconds per minute this is just a conversion i get 120 bullets or torpedoes if you like uh, if we're using the same terminology okay so now we can uh, substitute in the formula we get 120 capital n 50 is the number of required hit exactly and then we'll continue the same formula okay now the problem occurs we have the right formulation but how can we find choosing 50 out of 120 we need to find 120 factorial which is not something easy to do this number is uh, is very huge so for large n what we do we we use an approximation called de moyer laplace approximation it has some conditions and if the condition is not met we can go to the second approximation which is poisson approximation uh, what's de moyer laplace and poisson approximations it's just they are based on an approximation called stirling formula stirling's formula is of course we're not here after memorization it's just a formula i'm showing it with green if somebody wants to find m factorial he can approximate the factorial with the following expression and i'm showing here the two matches here these are just numbers and this is the factorial i just tried to find the factorial using the exact way of doing it using MATLAB or so and using the approximation and you can see that they are almost matching there's a 1% error for for uh, n equal to 10 now this is not uh, what we are after this is just a formula called Stirling formula to approximate um, the factorial so going back to our problem which is finding the probability of the Bernoulli experiment uh, you will find out that this guy called de Moer and Laplace they what they did is they used Stirling formula and to, uh, to simplify this expression so we got us we, they got us this red expression what is this expression it's an approximation of to avoid the factor the factorial again I'm not after memorizing this but if somebody give you the de Moer Laplace approximation you should be able to use it and understand what it means there are certain conditions for this to be used n k and n minus k all these three quantities must be large if they are not large the approximation will be not good up one 
k must be near n b the value of k must be near the value of n times b remember n is the total number p is the property so if these numbers are close okay to assure that the denominator is small because we're multiplying these quantities okay uh, so if, if we are sure that they are um, close the approximation will hold if this is not the case then we have to skip and go to another approximation if n is la very large and p is very small the more laplace approximation fails and we can use Poisson approximation again we're not deriving here just showing an approximation that's good for large n and p small so if somebody give me a problem like the previous one we'll continue decide with the problem in the next slide which one should we go for so to summarize in this slide we start with sterling formula just factorial approximation we used it used it, and we call this de Moyer laplace approximation it has certain condition if n large and b is small this is not going to hold so we're going to move to another approximation okay. remember this is not uh, for memorization it's just we should understand what they are and how to use them now back to the example if you go back to the example of hitting the torpedoes we found out that we have 128 bullets and we k for that was 50 n times p is now 120 times 0.4 is 48 n times 1 minus p is 72 just trying to find the, the expression required and now n k and n minus k are all large quantities 70 is relatively large k is near which is 50 is very close to 48 so all the required approximation hold for the Moyer Laplace approximation. Now it's time to substitute. So I will replace this with the expression. Now I'm using colors here just to match. This is going to be 48. And we know all the requirements. Just substitute. And we got the expression to be 0 0.0693. And that problem, getting exactly 50 bullets or torpedoes on, on the target, We'll have the following property of 0 0.0693. Now it's your turn if you accept the challenge. This is a challenging problem. Can you do it or not? I'd like you to um, to write your answer in the comment section and compare your section with others. Compare your answer, compare your answer with with others to see whether you get the right answer. This is, by the way, one of the first problems solved by Pascal. So can you? compare yourself with Pascal can you accept the challenge the problem says a pair of dice is rolled n times okay so we have the dice dice we have n we have uh, we are rolling two of them n times so every time I could get six six one five three two any combination so the first question says find the probability that seven will not show up at all find the property that the sum of the two at the top so we have the two die okay and then we're looking at the sum of the numbers at the top here okay it says find the property that seven will not show at the top so we'll not get one and six or two and five so find the probability we're assuming fair die that's relatively simple Find the property that of obtaining double six at least once. Remember your answers here will be function of n because we did not specify the number. So your final answer will be function of n. If you want, you can try, you can share with answers for n equal to 10. And the last problem, it says find the number of throws required to assure more than 50% success of obtaining double six. And this is really the challenge so here I want to find n how many times I should throw the die how many times we should throw them so that I get double six with probability more than 50 percent okay and this was a very popular problem because I want to know how many should I, times I should repeat to guarantee that I'll get better chance of getting double six at the top so double six this is we have six here and six here if i throw one time two times three times there is a certain number after which my chances of of getting it right of it will be more than not getting it 
So please write your answers in the sections. And if you get this one, you are doing great. You can write your answers for all the three cases. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.